Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash nuclear revenge. In today's episode, keep kicking myself and other students off our remote desktop link for the heck of it. Enjoy the consequences. How I made my landlord and neighbor pay over 14k in fines for harassing me. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Keep kicking myself and other students off our remote desktop link for the heck of it. Enjoy the consequences. Cross posted from our slash pro revenge, as apparently there's a felony in here. Eh. Anyways, here it is. So this happened last October, in 2020, and I feel it's finally safe to share it. Given the situation at that time, going to campus was a no-go so everything was online. As such, a lot of programs used for coursework, which were only on PC, needed a remote link for those of us on Macs or other devices. This link connects students to assigned desktops physically on campus through an application like Citrix. It would only allow students onto the desktops when another class was not remotely using that lab at the time and at night when registered classes were done. The on-campus computers would show that their drives were in use, so the students who lived on campus would know that someone was remotely accessing it. Well, I was taking a course in remote sensing, which required access to programs such as ArcMap, ArcGIS, R and Erdas, you can look them up. They were only available on PC so I, as a MacBook user, needed to use the remote link. The issue started at the start of October, when I was working on an assignment in ArcMap. I was really startled when I was suddenly kicked out, and then furious because I hadn't had the chance to save my latest input. I then went back to the web page, re-input my student credentials, and logged into a different desktop. Not two minutes later was I logged out again. Rightly peeved, I emailed the professor and TAs about it, and moved on to other homework. I figured it was a bug that it would soon be fixed. No. It continued throughout the entire fuggin' month. I ended up having to work on my remote labs between 9 p.m. and 2 a.m., as I literally was not able to work during the day without being kicked off. It was really annoying, especially since I couldn't even work during my assigned lab time. Other students started reporting this, and we'd get a lot of emails from IT. Updates, patches, and things like that we had to install to try and patch this bug. And nothing worked. It was painful. I decided that enough was enough and took a train to campus after my online morning classes. If it was going to keep booting me off the remote, then I would just go in person. I completed the online health check, got to campus no problem, and made my way to the building that housed all the PCs. Yes, we have a building that houses all the PCs for computer classes. Anyways, I went up and towards the lab that my credentials were registered to. I'm going to be honest. I wasn't expecting what I saw. But I sure was pissed. Through the windows into the lab, I saw two guys going from PC to PC, logging students off. At first I couldn't believe it, and then I got furious. They were laughing about screwing with hard-working students. I will call them dumb and dumber. That's I decided to get some payback. I pulled out my phone and placed it beside the window, and it was partially hidden by the trash bin inside the classroom, recording them and what they were doing. They didn't notice me, thank God, and I got onto my laptop, remote linking to my phone. I then got onto the university social media page and started to livestream the video from my phone. I put a title along the lines of found the bugs kicking students off remote desktop, video has been deleted, and I will explain soon. It didn't take long for fellow students to take notice of it, and it went viral within 30 minutes. Names were soon put out as dumb and dumber were recognized, and there was a lot of hate in the comments. Even campus police replied, asking for the location. I was all too happy to give it. It was then I saw on the stream that dumb pulled out his phone, and he started freaking out. He had noticed the stream and that it was live. I quickly rushed to grab my phone and retreat, and that's when Dummer rushed out the door and friggin' tackled me. We started brawling, it was self-defense, as he kept attacking me to grab my phone, 
and then I saw Dumb going for my laptop, which was hosting the stream, which was still being recorded from my phone. So. I kicked Dumber between the legs while elbowing him in the neck, before jumping Dumb. To be honest I don't really know what happened next, but I do remember campus police having to pull me off Dumb. Apparently I had full body tackled him away from my laptop, and he punched me in the face. With me apparently grabbing his carry-on bag, bashing him over the head with it, accidentally cracking his laptop. Oops. So, anyways the fight was broken up and we were all taken down to the campus police office. To make a very long story short, I got a relative slap on the wrist for my part of it. Had to do some on-campus community service, but my record was kept clean. Thankfully. I was not charged for the fight or the laptop, as I was able to prove self-defense, and that they hit me first slash tried to destroy my property intentionally, which made it worse for them. I was let off on the laptop for a technicality, as I was punched in the face, and had no idea that he even had a laptop in his carry-on. Phew. As for Dumb and Dumber, I was called in to testify at each of their hearings in December. Turns out kicking students off remote links was considered a very grave academic offense, as it was intentional tampering with others' work. The video stream I took was a big part of the evidence against them, and CCTV proved that they had been doing it for weeks. In almost all the computer labs, they had intentionally messed with over a hundred students. Adding to attacking me, I had a nice shiner for a month, and my devices, instead of running, they got into pretty hot water. Now, the reason this wasn't discovered sooner was due to the fact that this remote link was new to us, and IT was still working through the bugs. I don't know exactly what happened next, as they just needed me to come in, masked, and tell what I did and remembered. However, I did get notification in my email in March this past year that two students were expelled for intentional tampering of other students' work. Can you guess who? Yup, Dumb and Dumber got the boot for their dumb actions. It gets even better though. Turns out they were here on student visas. Which meant that not only were they expelled from the university with a black mark on their records, they were also given the boot from the country. And most definitely back to their very disappointed parents. Maybe it's karma, but they got publicly exposed on a live stream for their actions for all the school to see, which was taken down due to it needing to be evidence against them and all. But yep. They were expelled twice for their dumb actions, and with their names in campus infamy for their stunt. Hope they've learned their lesson. Kept from original post. How I made my landlord and neighbor pay over 14k in fines for harassing me. This post was originally shared on malicious compliance, and I was told about this subreddit by about 20 people. I don't post much. But it seemed a better fit. New info we bought Apple Air Tags, 29.99, each so not bad at all. And now have an alert set if they exceed 15 miles an hour. It has a built-in speaker and GPS tracking. Even if this idiot removes their collar he won't realize the collars are being tracked. I have a fast car. I'd be behind him so fast it would make his head spin. First of all before I start him about 80% these two are involved with each other in romantic way. But I can't confirm. Now I'm not an expert writer nor am I going to spend an extended, keyword, extended, period of time making sure everything is perfect. I did a once or twice over but there's just so much and I'm still a little frazzled by TE situation. I've had difficulty putting my thoughts on paper since elementary. This doesn't mean I won't do my best. I'm sure there's run on sentences and improper spelling. I don't think this is a prerequisite for sharing your experience. So I travel a lot, and I live in an RV mostly full time. I've stayed at the same park, however, for the last nine months. I've had issues here, they have called the police on me for arguing. Not joking, they will ignore me in the office. All because there was a small mistake on the paperwork when I stayed here on an overnight nine months ago. Something happened, and they tried to use that to kick me out however the owner said it didn't matter and all info was pulled from the registration so blaming the paperwork for being off by one year on the RV as a cause for eviction was far-fetched. There was a few other incidents but I just figured it's cheap here and I can pay my rent over the phone, who cares, 
and don't really plan on going anywhere as where I am all the parks are full for snowbird season plus I got a new job here. Anyways we had a neighbor who was miserable. We could tell from day one. We also have two cats. They hang out on our porch mostly all the time. Occasionally they stray but they're older and don't go far. So around six weeks ago, after nine months of being my neighbor and never saying a word, he started acting very erratic. Randomly approached my wife as she was washing the car outside and got in her face and started screaming saying that he dug cat poop out of the dirt behind his 1979 bus on bricks and now he was going to put traps out and poison. Somehow management had heard the commotion or he had told them to come but they pulled up and quickly pulled him to the side to talk to him privately. Refusing to even listen to us. We were very weirded out. Calling him baby, sweetheart, etc. So they said it's his space he can trap all he wants if your animals are going onto his property then that's your fault. Now this park is known to have so many cats they keep feeders by the front office. I warned them what they were doing was illegal, but they said, we've been doing this a long time we know exactly what we're doing. Call animal control if you don't believe me. I said okay, but he threatened to poison them so I'm making a police report in case anything happens I want him to be on record as having threatened them. They came took the report and oh man did that make him mad. Still at this point I hadn't figured out how to get my revenge, animal control said it was legal and didn't do anything. We immediately got the cats microchipped and went to Lowe's to buy cat traps to teach our cats what a trap is and how to not go into one. Easiest trick eBay ever taught an animal, took one try now they're terrified of anything resembling a trap. We were stumped. The cats were going stir crazy. Then five days later, she leaves a letter on my door, a self-help eviction saying I have no choice but to leave immediately and she was turning off the power on X day. I told her if she did I would call the local police as that's a self-help eviction and you've already demonstrated malice by calling the police on me for asking you a question you don't like. Assisting in the trapping of my cats while encouraging other cats to stay. Self-help evicting and at one point she refused my CDC declaration letter and I have all these things recorded on video. On top of all this she says he needs to start his Harley and let it run for 45 minutes to warm up even if he's not riding. That's what Harleys need two feet from my bedroom window when he knows I work nights and I'm asleep. Essentially trying to force me out. Saying my dummy camera isn't allowed however his real camera pointed at my space is. I was very prepared for an eviction threat as these guys get away with so much being that they can threaten eviction and people will just roll out in their RVs, not me, no no. Not me. After the manager finally spoke to the owner she realized she had dug herself into a hole and now couldn't evict me unless I had not paid rent as they had refused to show me a contract or any rules the entire time I've been here, they don't like to have written rules so they can change them as they need. The manager told me I was never allowed into the office unless to get mail and I must pay rent over the phone with a card. Still though I wasn't comfortable because my neighbor had now put out around four different traps. Some as close as one foot from my property line. He still hadn't caught anything. So by chance I ran into a property manager while out shopping for my own trap and he told me some interesting things. I did a little research and found out that trapping in Nevada is illegal without a permit. Too many protected species. So I knew the cats would never go into a trap, we did about five sessions with them, and they got to the point when they even saw the trap they just hide. So I told the landlord it's fine he can keep the traps. I had heard from a neighbor that he saw the manager opening up the storage room and loading his truck with animal traps. But he didn't know about our situation so he was confused. This is when I put my plan together. I knew the longer he saw he wasn't getting his way, the more traps he would put out. And the more erratic he would become. He started revving his Harley for 45 minutes about three times a day, while sitting inside with the radio on blasting, then head get a chop saw and cut lumber into as small of pieces as he could and then stand 10 feet back and launch them into a steel trailer. I had around 2 GB of video from my cell phone, so I only actually caught about half of it. I knew he was losing it. I put a dummy camera facing his front door and that's what did it. He got too close and pushed my wife on camera. 
I had successfully driven him nuts and had what I needed for a civil harassment suit. And I just let him stew, every few days I'd notice a new trap. Finally when he got up to 14 traps, his tiny RV space looked like a landmine of cat traps, my cats were and probably are still traumatized from the sight. My next move was to call the Nevada Fish and Wildlife. I emailed the picture of the traps. They finally showed up today and found his 14 traps, the fine is $1,000 per trap. These people also are cops that don't get to ever bust anyone so they took it very seriously. They confiscated his traps and hit the park with 14 k in fines. Afterwards she called me asking me why would I do that, I informed her I'm not done and that I'm building a case on her and her little friend for harassment. I since been moved to one of the best spots on the property near the million dollar RVS next to the pool and hot tub with a bar and pizza about a 200 foot walk and yes. I begged for a new spot to end this from day one but she said we're booked up full all winter we won't have even one spot until after Christmas.